Good afternoon to our Thursday Live. Today we are going to focus on time. And I think something that we all realize is that time flies. Um, today, well, we, I personally and my family is also celebrating the birthday of my grandmother, Hiti, that's no longer with us, but my grandmother just loved wearing hats. So this, Omar, is for you. I don't only have a bad hair day due to the weather in Gauteng, but I'm also thinking of you today. And our life today, we will be focusing on how to create the perfect table setting. With very little, we will inspire you how to create a sense of belonging and pastel colors just work together. This is our Easter table setting. But if you want to create something for a baby shower or a kitchen tea or a birthday party, this is the place where you will be inspired to do something absolutely beautiful with very little. So the colors we use today are pastel choco colors, reddish, mellow. There's a blending of various colors I'll show you later. We will be showing how to do both the underplates and the serviette, the serviette ring. We will also be showing how to stencil on wax paper. And then just look at all the colors. If you just look on the table, various pastel colors put together. And then the centerpiece for our Easter table is a glass jar that can be an empty coffee jar, any glass item. We have painted stripes on it and then finished off with a beautiful embellishment. So welcome to our Choco Life and let's start being creative. We are going to start today on our timber surface. So I have a timber board in front of me. Um, it's raw wood. No preparation is required on raw wood. Raw wood with choco paint. So make sure your wood is clean. And then I'm going to show you how to do a beautiful lime wash or white wash technique by using choco paint clear glaze. And then I'm going to go with cloud, it's dark bit, um, just to create what we have created on the table. So when lime washing or white washing, first very important pointer is that the surface needs to be a raw timber surface, raw cement surface, raw wood surface, raw brick surface, so that the surface can actually absorb the moisture. There are no rights or wrongs. I'm merely and inspiration. So if you find different ways of doing techniques, go for it and share it with us. I am also still learning every single day. Um, for this, I'm going to be mixing equal parts, clear glaze. So here's my clear glaze. It's a pure acrylic food safe sealant. So yes, you can use it as an underplate, surf your biltong or your cheeses on here. You can also use chocolate paint and clear glaze in nurseries. I had a few questions on that this week. So I'm just using a measuring cup and I'm just mixing more or less equal quantities choco and clear glaze together. And there's our vet. And I'm going to mix it with a paintbrush. And the reason why I am mixing glaze and choco together today for a lime wash effect, because we have done it differently in the past, is I want to, in one step, have a sealed surface where I can dish up, I can wipe clean afterwards, and I'm not concerned about stains. So I'm just mixing it together. So there you can see. Just mix everything together. I'm next going to take a mutton cloth. If you live in a country where mutton cloth is not available, you also can make use of microfiber cloth. I know in Australia this might be a challenge, but microfiber cloth, t-shirt material can be used. I'm dipping my cloth, or a rag, in normal tap water so that it's wet and I'm squeezing out any excess moisture. What I'm now going to do before I start is I'm going to wet my surface. 
This allows the blending of the color onto your surface just to be more easier. Okay, so my timber is damp. Next, with the same cloth, I just fold it like a ball in the palm of my hand. It's easier to control and to get a more even application. I paint some of my chocolate and glaze mix onto this. Now you never mix chocolate and the glaze together for just normal painting. We only do this as a lime wash technique if you want a surface that has some extra protection. That's what the glaze does. It adds extra protection. And now with my cloth, I'm simply wiping my paint and glaze mix onto my surface. And you can determine how light, is this, how light you want the surface to be. If you don't want it white, although it's called white wash, the color doesn't need to be white. You can add any color to the surface. Okay, my white wash technique is done. You can also, if you would prefer, wipe various colors on here and create like a blended effect. Next, I'm going to use one of our chocolate stencils, one of my favorites. You can see I use it a lot. It's a leafy one, and I'm going to do it here off center, and I am going to use Choco Paints Stencil of Paris. This is not Plaster of Paris, it's a product we manufacture that sets rock hard on your surface. And I'm going to mix some reddish mellow into it. So I have a paint tray. Now you don't want to add too much paint as the paint will make the stencil of Paris runny if you add too much. So I am just going to dip my paint scraper in my paint about a centimeter deep into the paint and then I'm going to mix this into my paste. Once the paste is dry, you will see that it dries three shades darker than your, um, than your original mix. So it will be darker than what I'm mixing currently when, once it's dry. Okay, this is done. You can secure your stencil with some masking tape. Due to the fact that I lamped washed this surface just now, it's still wet, my masking tape won't even adhere to the surface. I'm going to, with a paint scraper, just quickly see if there are any loose bits that I need to hold down when I do it. Very gently, start from the one end and spread the stencil of Paris paste onto my surface. I work gently, evenly, and if you find that once this is dry there are any unevennesses that need to be evened out, you simply sand it with a hundred grit piece of sandpaper. And this will dry darker. Oh, it's going to be beautiful. So this works well on a flat surface to get a very smooth, even application. Okay, and it's done. I just even out any unevenness. This is a lovely stencil. We have done it before with a shadow effect. Hanley um, in the Cape, Bruna Fida, she does it on walls so beautifully. Okay, and now, while it's still wet, I remove my stencil. Now I will put my stencil in some water. I can wash it, reuse it. You have seen how many colors are on there. That's how often I use it. And this is done. So there's a beautiful underplate in two easy steps.
Next, I'm going to show you how to make your own serviette rings, toilet rolls, cut in half. So I've simply cut them in half. Now you can paint them with the chalk or color of your choice, just so if, this, if the rope um, isn't tight next to each other, you can see color underneath. And you need a glue gun. And we need some rope. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start because it's quite simple. I, you can paint the toilet roll first. I haven't done it. I squeeze some of the glue gun's glue inside the toilet roll. Please be careful, it's hot. So don't let little ones attempt this step. They can maybe string it through for you or they can paint the toilet rolls for you. A lovely family um, project. And now I simply twist the rope around my toilet roll. And we upcycle, we reuse. And you can even add a name to this, maybe with a cut out piece of hardboard or cardboard with a guest name so that it's also uh, used as a place setting. And that's how simple it is. Once you come to the end, or if your rope is too short, you just make sure you put glue again on the inside, stick it down, and then just continue to string it through until it's completed. And at the end, you just glue it again with a glue gun. And then it is a beautiful serviette ring. Rope you get from p a um, they sell it in rolls like this. Okay, so we have done two steps. Does this make sense? No questions yet. Next step, we are going to paint onto glass. So let me show you. This is a glass jar that I got from Crazy Plastics, but you can literally use anything you have in your house. Um, old coffee jars, maybe mayonnaise jars. So reuse, repurpose glass. I have cleaned it thoroughly with lacquer thinners. So just think it's lacquer to be thin when you go to the hardware store and don't get turpentine or benzene. It needs to be lacquer thinners. And I prefer to use power fixes lacquer thinners. In Australia and New Zealand, there's diggers lacquer thinners at Bunnings Hardware that you can use. You clean the glass properly with a damp cloth. Wear gloves, make sure there's ventilation in your space and clean it well. What the thinners does, it etches the surface so that the chalk can grip. No primer is required. And once you have cleaned it, wait at least 40 minutes. Coastal areas, you may, might need to wait longer, but you will feel immediately. If you feel it's still wet, wait a little bit longer. And then you start painting. That's how easy it is. On glass surfaces, I prefer to use a Hamilton's Enzyme brush. It looks like this. It says Enzyme Perfection. This is a 38 millimeter, and this size will work perfectly on our glass surface. Now for this theme, I have selected the following colors to go onto the glass, and they are four. Let me remove this as well. So here we have Lebo's Light, Dory's Dance, I think this is Goodness, and Fine Lining. Beautiful pastel choco colors. Dip a dry brush in your choco paint after you have applied your masking tape and you simply just paint nice even layers of different pastel colors in between the masked sections. A first coat is never a perfect coat, but it needs to be a nice and even coat so that everything else you do is done evenly. Now, when it comes to masking tape, here is a tip. Don't wait too long after you have painted before you remove the masking tape. 
Then the paint dries like a film on top of your masking tape and you will remove some paint. So once this is hand dry, I'm going to do my first coat. By the time my first coat is complete, the paint should be ready for a second coat. Do my second coat, then wait five minutes to 10 minutes and then remove your masking tape. Don't wait too long. Different patterns can be made. It can be a solid color. This is completely up to you. And this is how you do it. So no difficulty, no pointers. Just make sure enzyme brush works best for an even application and you select a pattern and colors that suit your preference. We have a question from Stephanie. Stephanie vraag om middag, die lappe waar op jylle altyd werk, waar kan mens dit koop? Het lyk baie breed om oor die tafel te kan pas en het lyk soos linne. Ok, so the cloth I'm working on is a drop sheet that's available from hardware stores. So they, we use it, um, at, we are paint contractors, so we use it when we do paint contracting work to make sure that all the areas are covered and it's nice and thick. You can actually put one coat on a surface and the paint won't seep through. I rotate this piece all the time and it works like a job. Lovely for, um, if you are a photographer, for backdrops, for beautiful pictures and you do beautiful washing on here. So from your hardware store, Stephanie. Okay, so this is painting on glass, nothing difficult. After your first coat, you will wait more or less 20 to 40 minutes, do your second coat. But I'm sure by the time I'm done with my first coat, this section will be dry. Important, don't paint onto wet paint. You will simply just remove the work that you have already done. And then you will create unevenness and streakiness when working on wet paint to apply your second coat. Okay, so once this is done, um, we will almost go back to our centerpiece. We have used uh, embellishment. In previous videos, please go like, follow, subscribe to our YouTube channel. You will get the most amazing ideas. And on our YouTube channel, you will find videos where we demonstrate various uses for the antique brown glaze. Now, what I have done in that video, it says specifically how to use antique brown glaze. Um, I show how to mix in a, a third um, water, cooled boiling water into the antique brown glaze. And I also like to add matte black charcoal just to create more depth. I've already done it in there. So it is 30 milliliters um, cooled boiling water, 30 milliliters matte black paint into a normal container of antique brown glaze. So I'm just going to mix it through. You just got a compliment on your hat. <laughs> <laughs> I actually love hats. I would wear a hat every day. My grandmother had a cupboard filled with hats and I can remember my cousins, we had fashion shows. Um, my one cousin was the was the um, ceremony monster, what do you call it? <laughs> he was the MC and the, la the girls were the, were the models and we just paraded in Oma's long passage with our hats. Um, so I will share, Beatra, I will share on that question Chantal's details with you. And then you can make contact with Chantal and get all the details from her. So afterwards, I'll quickly share Chantal's details and then it will be available for everyone else to see as well. I'm not 100% sure. Okay, so on my embellishment, I'm going to paint some antique brown glaze. And in my other free hand, I have a damp mutton cloth microfiber if you can't find mutton cloth let me work with a microfiber cloth for those in New Zealand and Australia South Africa we have a broader audience and Choco family joining us uh, Michelle from Switzerland most probably is here as well welcome Michelle and then 
the, the lovely people from New Zealand and Australia. So here's a microfiber cloth. You get it from locally, South Africa Spa Checkers, and also available um, from hardware stores. So I'm painting on my embellishment that I've previously just given a coat of cloud white with some antique brown lace and it looks horrible and don't stress about it. This is the first step. So all Choco Paints products are eco-friendly, environmentally friendly, non-toxic, safe to use in children's rooms, nurseries. We even use Choco Paints paint on our flower pots outside and just seal it with a clear glaze. The clear glaze is a pure acrylic sealant. Go watch that video, please, on our YouTube channel. I take my damp microfiber cloth and I start wiping away. And you wipe away until you are happy. If you want to add more glaze, you can add more glaze due to the fact that all the chocolate products are water-based. I can now easily paint onto this em embellishment again with chocolate paint and just change the color or the shadows or the shading and that's done. Okay, so there's a lighter version of what we have done at the table. Let's just quickly go back to the table so that you can see what the centerpiece looks like before we continue with the rest. So here's the centerpiece with our various pastel colors. There's the embellishment. We have done this one in Dory Stance and then um, rope, exactly as we have done on the toilet roll with a glue gun. We adhere, adhered the rope with glue, twisted around and then stuck it to the last end with a glue gun at the back as well. And you can put an embellishment at the front, front and at the back. We have a question from Judy. Judy says, I love your videos. I was just wondering where I can buy a stencil with a bunch of lavender. I've hunted everywhere and with no luck. Thanks. Okay, so Choco Paint does custom cut stencils. If you send, um, inquire from your nearest stockist, or you can send us an email to support at chocopaint.co.za, and then Lee will point you in the right direction. Okay, we can, we can definitely assist. Next, we will be stenciling on our napkin. So I'm just making sure that my working area is nice and clean. And I'm just getting it here behind me. So choco paint can also work on fabric. Important pointers for fabric. It needs to be a natural woven fabric, not something synthetic. Um, and then how you wash it or treat it is once you are done stenciling. I will iron my fabric at the back. This is my dirty hand, I apologize. I will iron my fabric at the back once I'm done stenciling and it's dry with a hot iron. And if I want to wash, hand wash in cold water. Oh, pillowcases in my house has been stenciled. And you can tie dye old, and we have tie dye videos on the YouTube channel, old duvet covers, you can tie dye, t-shirts for the kids, lovely, lovely idea to do with children's parties. And it's actually contagious. Once you start tie-dyeing, you don't want to stop. It is so much fun. I just want to say something. We've had a few comments here, but the comments are over the video and people can't see what Nadine's doing. If you swipe with your finger to the right, it'll hide the comments and then you can see the full. Okay, I'm video. going to repeat that in, in case you haven't heard. Okay, so we don't put the comments on the screen. It's, it's something that's a Facebook normal. But if you want to remove the comments on your screen, just swipe with your finger from left to yeah. right. Yeah. And then the comments will disappear and you will be able to see what I'm doing. This video will also be available after this session. So if you want to go re-watch um, something that was done that you couldn't see, just swipe and the comments will disappear. Okay. I also didn't know, so don't, don't worry. Okay, so I am going to stencil with this beautiful choco paint stencil on a napkin, fabric napkin that I have sewed. 
In lockdown, I could only sew with a stapler. Um, I have improved my skills ever since. Okay, so I'm going to important tip. If you work on fabric, it's not as easy to hide any imperfections as on wood or a furniture piece, because when it's there, you need to go wash it out immediately, and sometimes it's a hassle. So what I do is I secure my stencil with masking tape. What it does, it actually prevents the stencil from moving, but it also prevents you from working um, on your fabric. So it just allows more, a, a broader border for you to, to stencil on. So I'm using Hamilton's masking tape, and this yellow one from Hamilton's actually works like a charm. While you are busy masking that off, um, Marissa wants to know, can I paint my horizontal blinds? And if so, do I need to fill it with glaze? Horizontal blinds, are they wood? Are they metal? My sister-in-law has painted her horizontal wooden blinds. Clean it properly with lacquer thinners. Wait 40 minutes and start painting. It's just those wires are a, are a big thing. So you need to have patience to work around them, else everything is painted. If patient, patience is your virtue, go for it. I'm using a stencil brush for my stenciling. I've dipped only the edge of my brush in reddish mellow. This is the color I'm working with. On my drop sheet, I am removing excess. You can also use newspaper. So my tip, my stencil brush is nice and dry so it doesn't leak in underneath my stencil. And even though it is so dry, just see how beautifully it spreads the paint onto the fabric. You can rather add more and more and more paint than having a problem with paint seeping through underneath your stencil, especially on fabric. So work with more patience and you will have a beautiful project. I don't dab. I make sure with my free hand, I press down any items. You can see I use my stencils over and over again. Any items that can be a problem. My masking tape helps. I've even adhered it to my drop sheet so that nothing moves around while I'm working. <laughs> Marissa says, sorry, she meant vertical blinds. <laughs> okay, vertical, yeah, we have had clients. If you go onto our Choco Creations group, there's a client that has painted those Corsentina doors, that's vinyl, beautifully for a church. They've actually been at the factory um, quite recently to come and show me, and I've seen vertical blinds painted. That, just type in on the group vertical blinds. If you struggle, just request Trish, Sunet, and Marina is on that group to um, provide assistance. But yeah, you can. No cleaning with thinners, it's fabric so you can paint. What I, will, what I always suggest with fabric is test a piece first. So test a piece, make sure you like it, you like the texture, because paint does change the texture of fabric before you continue. Okay, now I remove immediately. You don't need to wait. That's almost dry because it's such a thin layer of paint. Remove the masking tape. Move my stencil on. Oh, how beautiful is that? I have actually stenciled Kaylee, my daughter's curtains, in her room as well. And it looks like lace on her curtains. All curtains. I've cut off the tape at the top put ribbons, different printed ribbons on, um, thread it through a curtain pipe and then stencil the bottom. Okay, now I repeat my stencil. This is not a perfect pattern repeat, but it does work. I haven't put my masking tape down again, but you know what to do, rather do it. I don't want to waste unnecessary time. I just want you to see the final outcome. Okay. 
they are hard to press down. Um, Chris Ma, I hope I'm saying it right, asks, any chocolate in Ireland yet? She's watching from Ireland. <laughs> How good is it? Hello, Ireland. <laughs> oh, I love the Irish. There was this um, joke once, this guy was looking for a parking and he prayed so hard and he said, Dear God, please give me a parking. I'll go to Mass every Sunday. And all of a sudden a parking went open and he said, Don't worry me, God, I found me own parking. <laughs> so I can't wait to come and visit Ireland. Choco not yet in Ireland, but we did have inquiries. If you're in Ireland and you want to stop Choco, contact us. Nadine at chocopaint.co.za and look there how beautiful is that it's my dirty finger so crystal don't zoom in there but that's beautiful <laughs> <laughs> and then you have a beautiful handmade napkin and it can be washed okay let me show you what the napkins look like on the table Sorry, I just stepped on the microphone. Um, so we've used various colors. There's reddish mellow. Here we've used goodness. How beautiful. And then on this one over here, I actually had a dirty stencil brush. And there you can just see greens and pinks just blend in together. So blending of colors can also be done. Next we are going to stencil on wax paper. Now, to wrap a gift, to do something special, um, to put tissue paper inside a gift or as something on a table setting, this is how easy it is. So I'm going to work on the matte side of my wax paper. And I have this beautiful hot chocolate stencil that I'm going to use. And I'm actually just going to do a border so that you can just get the idea of this. This is on paper and I'm going to go with goodness. Once again, stencil brush. This one has been washed and it's wet. So I just want to make sure it's nice and dry before I start working with it. Okay, same tips apply. So I dip my brush, only the edges, in the chalk paint, how versatile. And then chalk paint is also a chalkboard paint. So if you want to paint a wall in a study, maybe your back door and you want to do a grocery list on it, or your to-do list in your study, you can write with chalk on, on chalk or. Um, there are so many uses. Okay, now with my very dry, how I usually taste it, to make sure it's dry, I streak it across my hand. There, it's still too wet. So I need to make it dry. Can you see how dry it is there? That's perfect. Rather apply more coats and have a very even application. This is going to be very light, but our theme is pastel colors. Nadine, your lip is a lip. <laughs> I love you, my roots. Oh, I cannot tell you how much I love a hat. I will wear a hat more often, but if you see my hairdo underneath this hat, you will be so thankful that I, I put it on a minute before this video started. It was raining here today, so I had to jump out of my car in the rain. So this is very subtle. I'm just going to make some pink hearts in between, just for the sake of you seeing what I'm doing. Wrapping books, we don't cover books in our house. We don't use plastic. We paint our books. Lovely way to look after nature. And are you ready for the reveal? Okay, so never buy gift paper again. You make your own even with newspaper or with brown paper. And there you have stenciled wax paper. 
on the dishes over here, I'm just going to take one closer. We have stenciled and put our bread onto the wax paper that was stenciled. My message for today is life is short and unpredictable. So don't have any regrets. Eat your dessert first, you may. Have a lovely week ahead. Stay creative, I hope you are inspired and I hope you make the time to make memories with special ones during Easter that is just around the corner. Love you all, see you all next week, same time, same place.